Okay, so now we're going to cover users and privileges. So in the last video, we touched a little bit on privileges with our ls-la, and we touched a little bit on users by changing the password of our root account. So now we'll cover a few more commands regarding those. So if we look again at ls-la, you could see all this crazy jumbled wordage over here, right? So it actually means something. So we look at the first line here. If we see a dash like this, a hyphen, that means it's a file. If we see a D, that means it's actually a directory. And then you see R, W, and X. So R, W, and X actually means read, write, execute. It's the permission settings that this particular group has. Now there are three groups here. There's the first, second, and then your third right here, right? So your first group right here is the owner of the file. So it looks like the owner of the file has full read, write, execution, right? And then the next set of three here is actually the permissions for the members of the group that own the file. So this is a group ownership as opposed to actual ownership here. So for the people that are in the group that has access to this file, they can only read and execute. They can't write to it. Now, for the last one, this is just all of their users. So any common user here can actually just read and execute. They can't write the document. So that comes into play, especially when we get into penetration testing, because with penetration testing, we're looking to have full access, right? So we're always going to be looking for that folder that has full read write. Typically, if we look at temp, that's our temp folder a lot of times. You see the temp folder has full read write execute. So when we're doing penetration testing, we're trying to upload some sort of exploit, we might actually upload it into the temp folder because that's where we can execute those those files. However, we could also be looking for other full read write execute files where we need to modify them and give us root access to a system. So it's all about insecure configurations um, and we're going to cover that more once we get into the actual penetration testing part of the course. So for the Linux Essentials part of the course, all we need to worry about is these file permissions. Another important feature of that is if we were to create a script, our script's not going to be able to run until it has full access. So how do we change access here? So let's make a file. I'm just going to make, uh, we'll just echo another text document, right? So we'll just say hello. And actually I typed that in backwards. So hello, and we'll call it uh, hello.text. So if we ls here, by default, we only have read write and then read access for everybody else. Meaning if we wanted to read it, we could say cat, which we're going to get into later. Uh, cat hello.txt, it just says hello. So what can we do here? Well, we can use something called change mode. In changing mode is chmod, and we have a couple options here. So we can do a plus, right? And we could say, well, we want read, write, execute, or we just want execute. Um, but another way I like doing it is you have uh, a number feature. So the one you really need to know is all sevens. Sevens gives you full read write access across the board. So if we say chmod 777 hello.txt, now we ls la. And you notice that hello.txt turns green. That means it is full read write. And here you go, we've got the dash here saying it's a file, and we've got read, write, execute across the board. So this is how we change file permissions. You don't need to necessarily know about the other numbers in terms of penetration testing. It becomes more in terms of configuration and security management of files if you were to get down that path. So to stay on the easiest path, just remember 777 or plus X will work as well. So changing the mode is, is critical, and we're going to cover it time and time again throughout the course uh, once we get a little bit deeper. So a couple more things we need to talk about. Say we wanted to add a new user. Well, there's a feature called add user. So we say add user, 
and one or two names is allowed. So we need to add user, say John. Okay, so it made something for John. Let's give him a password. Give him a password again. And we'll just hit enter for the defaults. It's all correct. Okay, so we now have a username John. And we can confirm that. We can actually cat the Etsy password file here. And you see down at the very bottom, we have this user John. So this Etsy password file, you're going to become very familiar with because it shows you all the users. Now this will, there's a lot of times where you're doing penetration testing, you're going to have access to this Etsy password file because it doesn't provide the password anymore. It used to a long time ago. Passwords are now in the shadow file. So you actually have a little bit of access and information disclosure here uh, at the hands of poor configuration. So you see that I've created a user John. Well, that gives us a little bit of information. Say there's SSH on a machine or something else. We can use that username of John to try to break into the machine. So we'll cover that again later. But if we wanted to see what the Etsy shadow file looks like, now we come in here and you've got these, these uh, jumbled stuff here, right? So it's just a hashing format. So what we're doing is we can actually use a tool like Hashcat to break this down and uh, crack these passwords. Now a password of password will be very easy, but just know that if you have access to the Etsy shadow file, you have a good chance of cracking a password uh, depending on your capabilities and depending on the strength of the password that allow you access to a machine. So something to think about there. Okay, so now we have our user John Let's go ahead and switch to him. So we can use something called SU, which stands for switch user, and we'll say switch user John. Okay, so it automatically gave us John here. Let's see if we could switch back to root. Okay, we can't just switch back to root because we need root's password, right? So we can type in password and that works, but if we didn't know the password, then we'd be stuck on John. We were able to access John because we were already root. So this comes into play in terms of users. Let's go back to John here. Now, if you're a user, you have to be able to do certain things. Um, you need permission to do certain things, I should say, right? So root has full access and permission to do everything. But John, we just created John. John doesn't have any sort of access. So if we wanted to, um, if we wanted to change the password, say we want to change the password for, for root, I can't modify the password information because I don't have that kind of access. Now there is something called a pseudo, which would provide John that access if we gave it to him. So it's called a pseudoers file. And basically anybody in that pseudoers file can change permissions given if they are a pseudo user, right? So we would type in pseudo password root. And it's going to ask for the password for John. But you're going to notice, hey, John's not in the pseudoers file. John can't do this. So John has base permissions, right? And we're going to counter that a lot of times in penetration testing, where if we get in, we'll get something called lower privilege, and we'll get an account like John. And we're going to try to escalate into root, but we just can't do it. You know, the chances of doing, a, doing that and having a John in a pseudoers file is just not high. It's possible, but it's not likely. So for now, just know that if you want a user other than root to have access to file permissions, you need to have them in the pseudoers file. That becomes useful too in penetration testing because you can look at the pseudoers file if you have access to see what users have pseudo privileges. Okay, so that is it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna be covering network commands and moving on gradually towards scripting. So let's go ahead and get there and I will see you when we get over there.